I'd very much like to welcome you all here today, along with Stephanie, to Creative Case, Leading Diverse Futures, our fourth annual diversity event. And I want to thank Stephanie and Adam Penford and Nottingham Playhouse for hosting us. Nottingham feels like an appropriate place for this event. It's an astonishingly diverse city that combines a passion for history with a commitment to contemporary culture and it keeps moving forward. In the 60s, Nottingham Playhouse was the pioneer regional theater, setting new standards in this fine building designed by Peter Morrow. This outstanding tradition has been maintained and enhanced by the present team. As Stephanie said, not far from here in the old lace market is Nottingham Contemporary and its striking building by Caruso Sunjan. In a few short years, the gallery has built an international reputation while remaining focused on its important to the, importance to the community. It now has 200,000 visitors a year, nearly two thirds of them local. In the emerging cultural quarter around Snainton, organizations like Dance4 and City Arts are laying the foundations for a new creative economy. And at Heysen Green, New Art Exchange has built an audience that is 40% BME and has helped to take not the Nottingham Mailer into the grounds of Nottingham Castle. I'm pleased that one of our hosts today is Skinder Hundal, Chief Executive of New Art Exchange. Visiting Nottingham recently, I was struck by the way that the city continues to look ahead with the arts always to the fore. In 2015, it became one of UNESCO's cities of literature under the direction of Sandeep Mahal, who is speaking immediately after me. The city was, of course, putting together a bid to be European capital of culture in 2023. And while that's now in abeyance, I hope temporarily, I'm confident that the work that they have done will bear fruit in many ways in the longer term. So Nottingham moves forward, and there is much for us to emulate and admire here. Today, I want to talk about the new diversity report, about what's gone well, and also what's not gone not so well, about the power to bring about change and the importance of leadership to this. Our agenda includes inspiring speakers and great performances. And I'd like to pay tribute to Baz, my predecessor, who pushed diversity up the agenda. Along with Darren Henley, our CEO, Baz was instrumental in promoting the creative case for diversity, positioning diversity as a force for artistic development that will also ensure the long-term health and prosperity of the arts sector. But I'm personally really delighted to be here today to learn from all of you and to affirm my commitment to a diversity which I see as vital for the arts, but also for society as a whole. I want to underline this by reference to a couple of relevant reports. Last month, the Center for Economics, Business and Business Research published their annual World Economic Lead Tables, which forecast that the UK's economic prospects over the long term remain strong, primarily because of our creativity and tech skills. This follows their assessment two years ago that our cultural diversity and strength in software and IT could make us the fourth largest economy in the world by the 2030s. But the second report was from the Social Mobility Commission. This highlighted how much harder it is for young people to overcome the socio-economic barriers that hinder progress and reinforces the findings of the Warwick Commission in 2015. Some of the most challenging areas for social mobility are here in the Midlands among young people from disadvantaged backgrounds. Nottingham is, of course, a culturally diverse city and a young city Nearly 30% of its population are aged 18 to 29, 
and nearly a third of this group are BME. Economists see this young, diverse, and tech-savvy savvy population as a national asset, a multitude of perspectives, ideas, talent, and creativity. But as the Mobility Commission report shows, we are, as a society, depriving this young generation of opportunity. So we have a problem. We're shutting the door on our own future, turning our backs on the potential of prosperity and encouraging division within our society. So our mission at the Arts Council to deliver diversity is vital in two respects. We will continue to push for greater representation in the arts across all the protected characteristics. We will aim to be a better representative, we will aim to be better representative of society. But we will go further. We will do more to help all young people progress in their lives, challenging socioeconomic barriers, working in communities where disadvantage is common to all, and widening access to our cultural institutions. I want the arts to be a medium of social progress, not a bastion of privilege, a place for the exchange of creative ideas and skills and the basis for mutual understanding in society. I want an inclusive world, a building that is open to all with a program for everyone, not an exclusive club. So what are we as an Arts Council doing about this? We've looked at how we can accelerate engagement in the arts by targeting socioeconomic barriers that cut across the protected characteristics and affect both white and BME communities. This, of course, is something that both Baz and Darren have talked about in the past. One pioneering program has been Creative People and Places, and as you know, between 2015 and 2018, we will invest 37 million in this program that has supported 21 community-led projects in areas of low arts participation, which are also very often places of economic, social, and educational deprivation. Creative People and Places has been an exciting way to develop wide or wider social engagement and has returned exceptional audience figures, reaching 1.45 million people. But of course, we need to know what is the long-term impact of this program. To do more, we need to know more. We're looking at the best way to collect data on social mobility, both within our workforce and elsewhere, and building up a more detailed picture of our audiences. We have to be realistic about what we can do to change society as a whole, but we should not be any less determined or vocal about the need for change in that society and in our sector. We can use our resources most effectively in partnership. One important way is through working with our friends in the education sector to see how creative thinking and practice can develop the skills of young people across a wide range of disciplines, maths, sciences, the humanities, and the arts. Hence, our collaboration with the University of Durham leading to the Durham Commission on Creativity and Education. This will look at how creative thinking and practice will be vital to future generations, because in the future, work is likely to require a mental agility that will be very different to the skills needed by industries in the past. In the meantime, what can we learn from this year's diversity report? What this report shows is that where the Arts Council has direct influence, we can, if we choose to do so, change things. As Darren said last year, we've been investing in a number of programs to bring about structural change, and they're beginning to show results. The Elevate program committed 5.3 million 
to develop the work of 40 organizations that were then outside the national portfolio, but which had the potential to make a strong case, a strong contribution to the case for creative diversity. In this year's investment process, 30 of those 40 organizations bid for national portfolio membership, and 20 were successful. Some of those graduates from Elevate are here today, and I'm delighted that they should be here as representatives of NPOs. Overall, the new portfolio is a huge step forward. It contains 96 BME-led organizations, 29 of which are new to the portfolio. And the new portfolio also contains a fresh generation of disability-led organizations, with 12 new organizations joining, including Disability Arts Online, Diverse City, Bamboozle, and Together 2012. Back in 2015, our last investment process saw a bewildering reduction in applications from diverse organizations, and only one new BME organization joined the portfolio that year. We have therefore engineered a positive shift. It shows, as I said, that when we choose, we can exert influence and we can make a difference. But I want to stress that we're still at the beginning of this process and only now seeing the results of decisions that were made several years ago. There is more to do, indeed, a lot more. We will be looking for these structural changes to have an impact on the makeup of the workforce where BME representation is below the national average. It is also disappointing to see the small improvement in disabled representation. We should do better. This needs some soul searching, and we are consistently failing this group of people. Today, as a first step forward, we're also publishing Making a Shift, a report commissioned from the EW Group that looks at the barriers faced by disabled people in the arts and culture sector. There was better news from Grants for the Arts, which saw a wider range of applications and an improvement in the success rates for BME, disabled and female awards. This year, we began capturing data on those who identify as white other and are not captured under the white British or Irish classifiers, including those from other parts of Europe it will be important to track this category in particular, given our sector's dependence on freedom of movement, especially as the country moves towards leaving the EU. We also brought museums and libraries into the national portfolio for the first time. Some of the museums have a striking lack of diversity within their workforces, especially given the range of their collections and their long-standing relationship with their communities. It is our hope that the shared culture of the portfolio and the many different kinds of partnership that it will bring will encourage people to be more active when it comes to implementing diversity in staff and on boards. Diverse boards will appoint diverse leaders who will implement diversity. Baz was a vocal advocate for succession planning for boards, and I'm pleased to see from the report that this is having some effect. Boards now show some 14% of their members as BME, though again, many museums have a long way to go. At present, this is still, if this is still to have a significant impact on leadership appointments, but there is a small positive movement in BME and disabled senior leadership. And while the job is far, done, far from done with respect to women, we are seeing more women in senior positions. So how have we been doing at the Arts Council itself? In general, we are mostly in line with the sector, and but with a few anomalies. 
the majority of our workforce are women who occupy most positions at manager level, but hitherto have been underrepresented amongst the group of directors. I'm pleased to say that since the data was brought together, we've appointed three women to director roles, which has changed the back balance, but we shall go further. By contrast, we have too few BME managers, but a good number of BME directors. It's not discouraging, it is improving, but it ought to be a lot better, and we're frankly poor on disability within the workforce. We are working with Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Consultants, EW Group, and the Institute of Employment Studies to review our own recruitment processes and the public perception of the Arts Council as an employer. We will use their findings to try to remove barriers that might prevent disabled people or those from the black or minority ethnic background entering or even applying for posts in our organization. We're currently working also to become a disability confident employer. Of course, the picture the diversity report paints is only as accurate as the data that is collected. Participation has improved, but there are too many responses marked unknown. There are instances where individuals have opted not to give information about themselves, but sometimes they have not been asked for it. Organizations must have or put in place effective processes to gather information about who works for them. If your workforce prefers not to give answers, that is their decision. But you must give them the chance to choose. It was interesting to see that data on the composition of boards was generally more complete than for the whole workforce. Some organizations might wish to replicate this successful approach in monitoring governance across their workforce. Making the case to government for public investment, as I and the National Council must do, means presenting a credible picture of who we are and what we're doing. We need all of you to be on board if we're to make a compelling case for funding at a time when competition for resources is fierce. With diversity, all of us, can have an impact. A small act, such as looking for difference rather than conformity within job applications, can change someone's life chances and may well be a crucial influence on an organization's standing in the community. The example and role of leadership is critical. We want leaders who are prepared to change and who welcome the challenge of the creative case. This year, nearly all portfolio members were rated good or met on a creative case. We will be expecting ambitious, outward-looking work that can persuade those who wonder if the arts are for them that they are welcome in our buildings and in our organizations. As a whole, we're fortunate to have enjoyed a period of relative stability in our funding in the last couple of years, although saying that I'm aware that there are many local authorities under threat and many organizations facing difficult negotiations with their local authorities. But we have had relative stability, particularly in central government funding. But good leaders are not afraid to initiate change when things are going well. That's when you have the chance to be proactive, not reactive. To think about the kind of organization you want to be in five years' time. Plan to keep changing. Don't let for change be forced upon you. Good leaders also now know that change can be difficult. It means rel relinquishing certainties 
and some aspects of your authority. That's why the Changemakers program has been so important. Darren talked about it last year. We've invested 2.6 million in supporting 20 Changemakers to take up senior roles across literature, visual arts, orchestras, theatres and museums, to help organisations develop a more diverse mindset and leadership, and to understand how diversity makes strong business and creative sense. I'm very pleased that we have a number of the change makers here today who are going to share their experiences with us. Andrew Miller, who was executive associate at the Royal and Dernagate in Northampton and is now on our national council, will be chairing the change maker session. Javed Alepour, our change maker at Sheffield Crucible, received a Scotsman First Fringe Award for his play, The Believers Are But Brothers, which will be playing at the Bush Theatre in London from late January into early February. Kaiser Rose at Ducky will also be joining the panel. Malavika Anderson, our change maker at Cambridge Museums, is now head of live programmes at the Wellcome Collection in London and is here in the audience. And we have video contributions from Sarah Wajid, our change maker at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery, who is now head of engagement at the Museum of London. And finally, another video contribution from Jess Thomas, our change maker at Battersea Art Centre, who can't be with us because she's participating in a festival in New York. The next few years will see considerable change. The conditions are there. A new, bigger, and more diverse portfolio, new organizations and energy, a shift in power at leadership and board level. The sector is moving forward. Those organizations that aren't prepared to change will be left behind. And now, we come to a challenge for the Arts Council itself. Later this month, we will launch the consultation period for the Arts Council's new 10-year strategy that will run from 2020. That new strategy, with new priorities, shaped in discussion with all of you, will be a great journey to undertake together. The mission to deliver great arts and culture for everyone has defined our investment and has been a rock for all of us over the past few years. But we have to change. The world has moved rapidly in the last decade and the arts have to be alive to the demands and the opportunities of a new political, social, economic and technological era. By 2030, the population of England may well pass 70 million with a fifth of people identifying as BME and, a population, and the population aged 65 and over will increase by a third. Technology will bring huge changes in the workplace and in how people spend their free time. But I'm sure that there will be an ever greater need for the arts and culture in all our lives in more participatory ways that encourage the creativity of each individual and provide a focus for us as communities. I hope that you will take part and enjoy the conversation about the new strategy. We'll be in touch shortly with information about how you can get involved. Sometime over the next decade, I'm confident that we will achieve a more truly diverse art sector. What will it look like? I suspect that it will be characterized by a change in a sense of what normal is. At present, I am thrilled that Kwame Kweama, whose great production of Ibsen's The Lady from the Sea at the Donmar, transposed the action from the North Sea to the Caribbean has been appointed as director of the Young Vic. I'm excited when I see extraordinary productions 
like the welcoming party by theatre rights at the Manchester International Festival, or Ramps on the Moon put together by a consortium of progressive theatres, including Nottingham Playhouse, and led by the new Woolsey in Ipswich, or Ballet Black's recent double bill at the Theatre Royal Stratford East. But one day, these things won't be so unusual. We won't remark on how exceptional they are. They will be intrinsic elements of a cultural world in which all of society will have a stake and a voice. Thank you.